My name is Rüdiger Rabe. I work at Scion on the integration of wide area wireless modems. Today I would like to talk about the wide area wireless capabilities of our new product, the EP10. The EP10 comes in two versions, one for CDMA networks and one for GSM UMTS networks. That's the version I would like to concentrate on today. And now, what are GSM UMTS networks? GSM was created in the 1980s in Europe as a standard for mobile telephone networks. Initially, only voice and SMS services were specified. Later, GPRS, or General Packet Radio Service, was added for data applications. And with the need for higher data rates, then came Edge as a higher speed data service. The frequency bands were standardized as well, with the 900 and 1800 MHz bands in Europe, Asia, Africa, and Australia. 850 MHz and 1900 MHz are used in the Americas. The original GSM standard, including the GPRS and Edge enhancements, is also referred to as 2G. With the need for higher speeds and more features, a new standard has emerged, UMTS. This is also sometimes called WCDMA, which is not to be confused with the CDMA standard that's used primarily in the Americas. An important feature of UMTS is that voice and packet data can be used simultaneously. Today, we have a further speed improvement on both the uplink and the downlink, and this combination is referred to as HSPA, High Speed Packet Access. A new frequency band has been assigned for UMTS in Europe, Asia, Africa, and Australia, the 2100 MHz band. In the Americas, on the other hand, the existing 2G bands are used for UMTS as well, and later the AWS band was added in the Americas. UMTS, including the HSPA enhancement, is also referred to as 3G. Now, returning to the EP10. The EP10 has a built-in wide area wireless modem that supports voice and SMS, as well as the data services GPRS, Edge, and HSPA in all of the frequency bands just mentioned. That is in the 850, 900, 1800, and 1900 MHz GSM bands as well as 850, 1900, and 2100 MHz, as well as the AWS UMTS band. Now, let's see how all this works in the EP10. First, for GSM UMTS networks, we need to insert a SIM card. And to do that, we have to first suspend the unit. The SIM card socket is located underneath the battery. We open the battery latch, remove the battery, unlock the SIM card holder, insert the SIM card correctly with the cutoff corner pointing this way, and lock this little metal part in place. Then we insert the battery again and close the latch, and we are ready to turn the terminal back on. Once we turn the terminal back on, we might get to this screen. This is the pin entry screen. If the SIM is configured to require a PIN, then the PIN, the personal identification number that you have received from your network operator, has to be entered here. We'll do that now. Enter our PIN. Press Enter. If the PIN was accepted, or in the case that uh, no PIN is required, you will see the today screen of your terminal like this. Here you see your current network, and on top of the screen you see a signal strength indicator beside the antenna symbol, and beside 3G is our current packet data service. Now let's open the voice dialer. We click on phone, we click again, and here now we are ready to dial and receive voice calls there is no further voice configuration required. Beside simple voice calls, 
The EP10 also supports a number of advanced voice call features such as voicemail, call forwarding, call waiting, call hold, conference calls, and call barring. Those can be configured by pressing on the menu button and selecting options. To use the data service, we need to configure a data connection. This can be cumbersome, but we've tried to simplify the process. We've created a database with settings for most networks around the world. To configure the data connection, we click on the menu button in the voice dialer and then on options. Here at the top, we navigate to the data tab and scroll down to the create button. Once we press create, the EP10 looks up the home network in the database and creates a data connection. At this point, any application can use this data connection. We'll try it out by starting Internet Explorer. So we click on Internet Explorer. Here we see how the data connection is being set up. And once this is complete, the web page starts loading. Here we go, we are done. Beyond what we've shown in this short presentation, we are also providing diagnostics and logging features for the wide area wireless modem built right into the EP10. I hope you found this presentation useful. If you have questions or for more information, please visit us at ingenuityworking.com. Thank you for your time.